Hello everyone. Uh, had some folks asking me about some uh, Helix content and some information on the patch I've been using with my Helix. Uh, and so I wanted to share a little bit of information about how I set it up. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably know what a Line 6 Helix is, so I'm not going to go into a lot of time describing it and what it's capable of. Uh, plenty of other information on the web for that. Um, what I have here is kind of what I consider my main patch. It's my, you know, Desert Island patch. <laughs> if I'm if I have one patch only I can use, this kind of covers all the ground I want to cover. So I'm going to explain how I set that up. Um, there are limitless ways of doing this. Um, so I, you can I'll have a link to this patch if you want to download it. Um, but just know that you know what I'm trying to to uh, communicate here basically is just here's a way to do it. Here's the way I do it. Here's the results I get. Um, and hopefully you'll kind of take away some stuff from this and get some ideas and, um, you know, uh, kind of figure out how to get your own sound out of this. So anyway, my patch is based around a Dr. Z amp model. Uh, this has been the one I've loved since the HD days, HD 500 days. So it was a logical place to start. Plenty of other great, amazing sounding amps in Helix. Um, I just started in familiar territory, and I've been pretty happy, so I haven't uh, made a lot of changes yet. There's still a ton of experimenting to do. I haven't had this pedal that long. Uh, I'm using a matching cabinet, the 2x12 cabinet. Um, real quick on the settings, I mean, I've got a 67 condenser um, microphone with a little bit of distance, about 8 inches from the, from the speaker, 60 hertz of low cut, um, 12K of high cut about 9% early reflections and the level set set pretty flat. I actually do use a controller to bump this level up uh, for like a solo boost. So one of, th one of the many ways you can configure stuff like that with Helix. Um, and I'll go into controller assignments, stuff like that in another video. Um, the way the amp is set up, uh, drives on about six. I mean, you can see these settings. I don't, I'm going to call everything out. I mean, you can look here and see how it's set up. I do a lot of strati type tones. So as you can see, like the treble and presence are backed off a bit. Uh, the bass is a little bit heavier. Uh, the way the drive and master set, um, it's pretty clean. You know, so it's my, the way I have this set up is like I would if it was a tube amp with a pedal board. So the, the amp is more or less just clean. You know, if I flip to a bridge pickup and really nail it, you know, I'm going to get just a little bit of grit, but not much. It's, it's basically set up to be, um, to be my clean tones. So. And uh, I kind of like my clean sounds bright and poppy. You know, I like it to, to have some dynamics. And uh, that's kind of kind of what I got going on here. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only other thing I've got running is I've got a reverb down here, room reverb, and you're hearing that along with the amp. Otherwise, that's that's it. Like that's just the basic core tones. Um, I do run a compressor ahead of the amp, and I pretty much just leave that on. You can take a look here at the settings. Um, it's pretty mild. Um, you know, a three to one ratio. Uh, I'm not. I'm not hitting it too hard with the compressor. It's basically just to give it a little more, a little more punch and dynamics. Um, if I turn the compressor off, then turn it back on, you can hear it's pretty subtle. It just has a little bit of punch to it. Um, so that's, you know, that's core sounds, core amp sounds. So from there, what I do is I use drive pedals to kind of. Um, be my multi-channel part of of the amp um, i've got a couple of tube screamers and i've got one timmy pedal um, the way i have it set up i've got one tube screamer the first one in line here that is very mild gain um, it's it takes a little bit of the high-end edge off compresses it a little bit and just gives it a little bit of bite so that sounds like this <laughs> that mid-range character that's very very distinctive to a tube screamer um, if I'm going to just do like some blues or if I want just a little bit of grit behind the chords
you know, that's that's what that's there for. And that works real well for that application. Um, I have another tube screamer that's basically, you know, it's the same pedal, but it's just set with more gain. <laughs> So we're getting a little bit gaining your territory. You know, kick it over to the bridge, pick up. <laughs> so you can kind of treat that as a crunch channel. Uh, sometimes I'll throw those on together to get a little extra crunch. <laughs> You know, to me now, it's in kind of a Marshall JTM 45 plexi kind of territory with both those pedals. <laughs> Which I really, really dig that sound. Um, the Timmy is set up, I think, a little bit higher in gain than the, than the, either with the Tube Screamers um, or maybe similar to the higher gain Tube Screamer. Just a different character drive, you know. So here, here it is back on the neck pickup. <laughs> And has a lot of clarity, uh, keeps a lot of the high end, so a lot of times I'll pair that with the lower gain tube screamer. So that's like if I want to add that tube screamer, you know, mid range character to it, get some compression, some drive, but retain, you know, a lot of high end bite. Uh, the Timmy and Tube Screamer together kind of give me that. And so, you know, if I want to get really gainy, I'll just throw them all on. <laughs> And honestly, that's as much gain as I ever use. I'm not really a, I'm not really a high gain player. So, those those three drive pedals they give me three separate flavors, and then you know, between the three, I have different combinations where I can put them together for different drive sounds. That really covers all my bases. That's just how I like to set it up. Like I said, you can do it a million ways with Helix. You know, another interesting way of of doing this with Helix is you can actually come over to the amp and assign. Um, a pedal to control all the parameters on the amp. So where when the pedal's in one state, the amp is clean, you could hit the pedal and it changes, bumps the drive all the way up and the master all the way up and you get more crunch from the amp. The, you know, you, you can do it that way. There's there's just a million ways to do it with, with Helix. You know, I, like I said, I'm just showing you my particular brand, how I like to do it. So we've got those, those three there. So that's the kind of meat and potatoes of the sound. Um, if you follow the path, basically the way I have this set up is um, I've got a split coming down here to, that leads into a volume pedal and a couple of delays and a tremolo. Um, I actually have this muted going straight, so only the audio only goes down here to this path. So um, instead of doing a wet dry, it, it just ends up all coming back here wet, and, and I do boost. Um, I boost up channel B six decibels to to compensate for the fact that I've cut path A a little bit. Um, so that leads us down to this bottom path. Um, I guess real quick before I jump down to the bottom path, there are two pedals up here I didn't talk about. I've got a wah pedal here, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm using the throaty wah. One of the things I do really like about Helix, they add the ability to define the high and low frequency, which is really cool because some of the wahs, you know, they sound good, but maybe one goes a little too high or not low enough. And so they've added all these parameters where you can really dial in exactly exactly what you want. Perfect, perfect addition to uh, to the wah there. The other thing I've got here is the Univibe. I think that's probably the, if I had to vote on most improved effect of Helix over the HD series, it would be the Univibe. Hated, hated the Univibe on the HD series, and the one here on the Helix is pretty awesome. So here's what that sounds like. So that's my whole top row there. Um, Wah pedal, three distortions, Univibe. And then, like I said, the compressor stays on. Uh, just to give it a little pop. 
come down here to the next row, I've got a, a volume pedal. The reason I've got my volume pedal here, and people use volume pedals in different places, some people like them before the amp, so it works like a volume knob. Um, I don't really have a problem using the volume knob on the guitar for that purpose. So I like to have it after the amp to control the actual vo output volume without affecting uh, the gain. You know, basically, you know, you turn your volume knob down, you're going to reduce the amount of gain. I just wanted a, a basically a true volume control after the amp. So that's why I've got it sitting here. I've got these modulation effects after the volume so that uh, when I have, um, you know, when I have a delay turned on, for example, if I pull the volume pedal back, the delay is not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Well, you can't. Actually, let me highlight this, and you can see what I'm doing with the volume pedal. So if the volume pedal was sitting after the delay, when I rocked it back, it would kill the delay. Um, so that's why that's there. Um, I really am a big fan of um, the uh, Memory Man model delay, um, an eighth note, dotted eighth note delay junkie. Um, being a U2 fan and spending a lot of years playing in church, it's like, is there any other way to set a delay? I don't know. This is it. This is the way that, that I always kind of have it set. Um, so I have two delays in a row. One of them is, is just kind of for ambience, you know, um, medium amount of feedback mixed down a little bit so I can kind of play over it. Then I have another delay that, um, let me turn the first one off. This delay is set to be practically the same volume as the guitar signal uh, and only have one repeat. Okay, so this is a very much, um, you know, a U2 kind of, uh, like if you're going to do a song, say, Bad by uh, U2, I think that's about 105 on let me set my tempo here. Yeah, I think that's about right. So uh, the reason you you could have a delay like this where the delay is about the same volume as your guitar, so it can act as, you, you know, you play, you play half, but double comes out kind of thing, like... <laughs> Without that delay, it's just, you know. <clears throat> so any U2 fans out there, that's, that's nothing, that's not news to you. But the reason that I like to include that in my main patch, because I mean, that's not, that exact song isn't something I'm going to be doing a lot. Um, when I'm doing rhythm, and if I'm the only guitar player, um, like I said, I do a lot of church stuff. Uh, when I'm arpeggiating chords and so forth, having that second delay on kind of helps fill the sound out a bit. So if I'm doing like a... <laughs> you know, it kind of it doesn't exactly give the impression of two guitar players. But it can fill up a lot of space if it's just you. Sometimes I'm, I'm in ensembles where, um, you know, I'm the only electric guitar player and sometimes the only guitar player, period. So that's why I have, I have two uh, delays there like that, and that, that works really nicely for, for that kind of stuff. Um, I also have a tremolo over here. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, nothing too exciting about a tremolo. Um, so signal path wise, you know, signal runs through here, the drive pedals, the univibe, the, the compressor, the amp pretty much goes all the way. All the signal goes down to path one B hits a volume pedal, tremolo, the two delays at this point, the whole signal runs down to two a got my reverb here. Now these next four blocks all work together in concert and I picked this trick up. Um, I think the U the YouTube channel was Worship Tutorials, and I will find out and put a link in the description of this video because they they gave me the idea for this. I downloaded one of their patches and just copied and pasted these blocks. These work really cool as a, as a swell or or a really strong ambience. 
Um, so mod course echo, Adriatic echo or delay, particle verb, and uh, I think one's a particle. I guess they're both particle. I thought one was a shimmer. Anyway, I thought one was an octave verb, actually, but I guess they're both particle verbs. <coughs> so anyway, I have one controller that turns um, all four of those pedals on. Uh, and what it sounds like when they're all four on is this. So it's killer for doing, you know, pads like that. And I've also I also found, you know, I'll turn one of my other delays on, and even even just to have um, an underlying uh, sound for rhythm parts. Um, <laughs> Again, if you're the only guitar player in the band and uh, and the group I'm currently playing with, sometimes we'll have a piano player and no synthesizer play, no, you know, no, somebody doing like straight piano parts, but no like keyboard parts. Um, so I'm able to actually kind of fill in some of those pad spaces and, and sonic spaces that otherwise would go kind of unfilled. So that that's really cool. I mean, just, you know, with, with something like HD 500, you just didn't have nearly the amount of effects blocks and, and things where you could just kind of throw stuff like that on at will. So that's pretty, I love it. I love that. Uh, and I'll hats off for, for the tip there. Those guys of, uh, for more, I think, like I said, I think it's worship tutorials. I'll put a link, but thanks guys. Great idea there. Um, from there, I do have a 50, 50 split here, uh, and half the signals going straight. The other half is coming down here. Um, the, this is an effects loop. I have a Digitech Jamman stereo that I put in the effects loop for the sole purpose of playing back backing tracks. Um, the Helix looper is great, so I don't really use it, the, the Jamman, for any live looping functions, but it has slots where I can store backing tracks, and so that's here. Then here's the looper here, which is really good. They've, they've, uh, I think more than doubled the amount of time. I think you can have up to two minutes if you have it set to half speed of loop time, which is honestly all I ever need. I, I'm not, I'm not really a big like loop a whole verse chorus and let it keep going. I don't know. That's just a lot. Two minutes, plenty of time is where I'm come where I'm ending on that. Uh, I've got another volume pedal here, so I can fade loops out. That was one complaint I had about the HT500. You could put the looper would go at the, you know, either at the very beginning of the chain, meaning any effect you turned on and off affected what was looped, or at the end of the chain, which is where it's more desirable for live looping, but you couldn't put the volume pedal afterwards, so you get this big, massive loop, and, and uh, on the HD, you just basically had to end up either having an external volume pedal for fade-outs or just abruptly ending it. So this is kind of cool. This, this gives me the ability to fade-out um, fade loops. Um, I guess technically I could have put all this in one line. Um, I think my reasoning here was the same kind of with this volume pedal up here. I, I didn't want this volume pedal to cut off any of the swells if, if I, yeah, I think that's why I did that. So if this volume pedal was in line up here and these were turned on and I backed the volume down with the volume pedal, it would, it would pull those out. Um, which again, there are. Helix has a million options. I could actually, with the same switch that I turn these on, I could just turn this volume pedal off and avoid the problem that way. That's the cool thing about Helix. There's about a million ways to solve any one problem. Um, but that's that's this is my main patch, and this literally covers 90%, 95% for electric guitar work of what I want to do. And you can see I've I've still got tons of empty slots. I mean, there's... You know, there's still plenty of stuff I can do. Um, I still have yet to really experiment with third-party IRs or dual cabs. You know, I just still have the, I mean, this amp block is the amp and cab together. I mean, it's, it's. I'm still using it kind of like an HD kind of setup in that regard. Um, and uh, 
So anyway, but at the same time, I mean, I'm I'm happy as I can be tone wise. Uh, you know, this is um, this has kind of gotten me where I want to be. Um, I hope that uh, I hope this has been helpful, seeing how I've set my patch up. Um, hopefully, it's give, hopefully it's given you some ideas. Uh, I would strongly encourage people to try to find their own individual sound. Just downloading someone else's patch is never going to make you sound like that person. It just, it's not. I mean, it'll get you close, but everybody's guitars are different. Their playing style's different. The speakers you're running through are different. I guess I should mention, I, I always run either direct PA or direct recording interface or, or to an active monitor. So this patch is, is designed for, you know, what they call FRFR or full range flat response speakers. Um... Uh, of course, I mean, I could just turn the cabinet model off if I wanted to run it straight to a actual guitar amp, but I typically don't do that. So anyway, this is it. I'll just uh, noodle around a little bit here at the end of the patch, turn some effects on and off, and kind of give you a demo of, of what the patch can do. But um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope hope it was some kind of valuable information to be shared for you, and uh, happy playing. Thank <laughs> you.